Today is May 30th, 2024. How can I put it? Um, being that viral sensation, <laughs> trying to carry on with uh, what has kind of dropped in my, lo my lap, like becoming viral wasn't something that I really thought would ever really happen for someone like me, but it did. But now it's not just about, you know, being a viral sensation. Now how do I continue doing what I set out to do, and that was to do ASMR and help other people who was dealing with uh, different things in their life, like myself. Testing one, two, one, two. It's been a long day, and you just want to go away. You can't sleep at night, and now I'm here. I can't promise tomorrow, but you're going to fall out of day. We can tingle it away. Now I'm here. Hello, 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 hi, Spirit of Lights. Welcome back uh, to Life with Spirit Girl. Yeah. They're mowing outside today. Um, so, if you watched the vlog that was loaded yesterday, which is called Emotional Motherhood Stuck at the Freaking Gas Station video, which is vlog number one that I loaded for um the channel then you would know that yeah i was gonna um, be doing this little small chat and i think i'm gonna title this chat why or why did not want to talk about 2018 or and i'm not sad you guys i'm actually not sad you know tears are the tears are cleansing. Tears are are, are are a cleansing. Okay. And I'm I'm glad it's dark in this car. <laughs> Cause I know I got glitter on my face. I, like, I'm in glitter freaking heaven right now at home. Like glitter's gonna be with me for the rest of my life. Okay. Talk about twenty eighteen or what happened in twenty eighteen. Because now I can tell you what happened. That you know, um, without being so emotional i would think i feel like i came such a long long way than where i was before as far as like dealing with my emotions i still get very teary i still cry sometimes i still get emotional but i feel like i deal with my feelings a lot better than i did uh in the past okay so in 2018, we had just moved into our new townhouse, which was so beautiful. Um, we had a income spike, so uh, we thought, oh, this would be a great time for us to get um, our own rooms, um, have more room to do things in our house and fix up the house and we'll be able to invite family and friends and have like, um, they can stay the night, they can stay the week, they don't have to stay in a motel. Uh, the house was uh, very, very pretty. It was an apartment townhouse, but it was more like a house. It had three floors, three stories. It was absolutely gorgeous. It had high ceilings on each floor, I don't know how they did that, but it had high ceilings on each floor. It was very beautiful. Um, it did come with, um, like, the windows wasn't completely sealed because, like, the, we had cattle pillars that would be on the window, and then they'll be inside the house, crawling up the house. And uh, we don't, none of us like bugs like that. <laughs> We're not excited about like, oh my God, bugs. No, we don't like bugs like that. So that kind of freaked us out. Uh, we also had coyotes. <laughs> 
we uh, they built the apartment complex I, I would think on like a coyote ground or whatever where they habitat at so they still was there um, there was a person who dog was attacked um, people were scared to take their dog walking they had a nice trail out there for you to go walking um, but it said beware of coyotes and child they were out there at night you can hear them Ooh, and all of that you know you can see them running um, and uh, I was um, a little scared to come out the front door because um, a couple of neighbors, neighbors said that they had interactions with interactions with the coyotes and that's scary you know so I would get in my car in the garage and then exit you know because I was I was scared so I wasn't going to be out there like really chilling on my porch I think the only time that I ever really was out there on my porch is when my sister came to visit me so yeah in 2018 we was able um, to finally get a nice uh, I would say we had decent places to stay you know um, before we moved to Texas we always lived in a, a house and at the end of moving to Texas, we were in the apartment because of the loss of everything, the business and stuff like that. But when we got to Texas, we was always in like uh, a very small apartment so that we can, you know, be able to pay the rent. So this time, you know, with everything had an income spike, uh, we were doing well. So we got a townhouse and it was very beautiful, but then it had some flaws. Um, and then one of the things um, that happened in 2018 is that um, Dream was gone. He left to go to um, the Air Force. Um, that was like bittersweet. We were so proud of him, but at the same time, we were just like, we missed him a lot. So he was only home a little bit here and there. He got to enjoy the townhouse, but not as much as me and Nadine did. Um, in 2018, I invited my sister, my family. I thought it was going to be a chance for me to... Um, I invited two of my sisters, but only one came. Two of my baby sisters. Um, only one came with her family, and it was nice. Um, I enjoyed them, but then I realized that it wasn't going the way that I would like it to go because I think that my sister had a hard time adapting with being around me and not having the sisters, the other sisters that she, you know, was growing up with during the time that I wasn't around. So um, it didn't work out. We, I thought we was going to end up being so close because we talked about growing old together as sisters and not having like to be worried about friends and stuff like that even though my sister she always had like uh, a pretty amount of friends but i was so excited to just have her presence around and know that i can call her she can call me and once she visited me it was very short-lived and then during that time i had found out um information from my sister about my uncle that I was close to, so I was really upset thinking that uh, me and my uncle relationship wasn't as close as I thought we were, because he's more like a father to me since my father's gone, rest in peace, my father passed, but I have an uncle that remind me so much of him. And so I end up kind of cutting my relationship off of my uncle based on what my sister was telling me and I should have did more investigation on both parts uh, to make sure that everything that was being said was true because right after my sister got home she pretty much kind of changed like when I would call her it wasn't that hey you know it was hey you know and, and, and when I tried to talk to her it was so hard just having the conversation flow like we normally let it flow it was like I asked a question she answered and I'd be like well okay well finish doing what you're doing I and that'd be it where before it'd be like okay I love you and 
it wasn't like that no more. So from what I gather, I guess she got back with the family. They talk and whatever I thought it was going to be was not going to be. So I started backing out of trying to pursue that relationship because I feel like we're not kids anymore. When they're not babies, even though I see them as my little sisters, they're grown older women. So if they can't, uh, love is reciprocated all the way around. And it's not a take, take, take thing. If they can't give and take, um, it's up to you to decide which, how you're gonna allow someone to treat you or where you're gonna fit in at. And I decided that I don't wanna be half treated. I don't want to be just giving love and not receiving love back. And I don't want to feel excited about something and they don't feel excited about it. Or I don't want to feel like we're in a relationship and behind my back, we're not in a relationship, you know. Also, you know, um, in uh, 2018, I was uh, dealing with um, trying to figure out my relationship. It was like the beginning of... I'm putting my foot down. I'm gonna figure out why me and my oldest daughter don't have a good relationship. I'm gonna to get to the end of this. And I was thinking, excuse me, my eye kind of itching a little bit. I feel like dust is in it, I don't know why. I, well, I just put moisturizer on so I might feel a little weird. Um, and yeah, so, um, I, and my thought process was, at the end of this, me and my daughter are gonna finally have a good relationship, a mother and daughter relationship, my oldest daughter, and then all of us will be a complete family. Cause I always felt like I was lingering and I wasn't fully engaging myself into my whole complete family as far as like my children. That's my family, my intimate family, my intermediate family, the ones I live with and share my life with. Um, because I felt like my daughter and my grandkids need to be involved, you know. But at the time, I thought, I really truly thought that um, I'd done something and I need to figure out what I'd done and apologize so that I can have this loving relationship with my daughter. But come to find out, in my opinion, she was groomed when she ran away from home from my side of the family and she had already made up her mind that I would never be family to her or her kids, but she just never came out and told me. She, I, th I don't think, I, I feel like she was throwing hints and she was saying things over the years, but for some reason I just wasn't catching it and I just wasn't taking it serious. Um, but when I decided to go after the truth, and I found out the truth. And when she told me the truth, she was really gloating. And um, I can hear the laughter and the smile behind it and the funniness to her behind it, where I was uh, devastated once I heard the truth. And she, like, she told me, like, I, I made a statement and she said, oh no, no, we'll never be close. When I, when I was saying like, um, all I want is for us to be a family and to be close and I'm, I'm giving it everything. I'm trying to just tell me what to do. And she's like, oh no, we'll never be close. And and, I, and my first thought process was like, well, why? And uh, once she explained to me, and she still didn't tell me the whole complete truth, the truth came out. The truth came out by uh, my uncle and my, my, my younger sister that visited me. When the truth came out and they told me about it. And I think the only reason why I got the truth from my sister, um, I, it's not, I don't think that she felt guilt. I think that she felt resentment towards one of my sisters. And she was upset that their relationship wasn't going the way that it normally goes. I think that they were close. I feel like they were close and they were mad with each other at the time. And now that she was talking to me and she decided she was no longer going to have nothing to do with them at the time, she kind of told on them. She told on them. Not really like, I need to tell you the truth because I love you. 
you know, wasn't that kind of thing. It was, oh, I'm going to tell you something because they're not going to treat me like this. It was like that. So she kind of told me everything that was going on, and I was shocked. I wasn't even speaking to my daughter at the time because of she cut off the phone that she had gave me. She blocked us from my granddaughter's number. She changed her phone number. So I wasn't even talking to her at the time. And um, my um, son, she contacted my son. My son had her number and I contacted her and I asked her about it. And she didn't want to talk about it. She didn't want to like talk. She, and you know, all I kept saying to her was, all these years, all these years, you knew the truth and you didn't tell me. If I knew this, I wouldn't have been running behind you. I wouldn't have been trying to have a relationship with you. I would, I would have had let you live. I would have just moved on. But I felt in my heart as a mom, like you don't give up on your kids or anything like that. But there's a point in time that when they're kids, maybe you can keep pursuing, but when they become adults and they make up their mind that they don't want a relationship with you, you have to respect that. And I told her I would have respected her. But when I would ask her, well, why would you come and go on vacation with us? And then after vac we think and everything's good and we're so excited about our relationship and you're back in the family, now you're not speaking to us. Now you're blocking us. Now you don't want nothing to do with us. Why does this keep happening? And she said, oh, it's not you. It's me. Okay, then what, what is it? What is it about you that make you do this to us? And she made, kind of made us feel like she, um, she just getting her ways or whatever, but that wasn't the case. You know, I found out the truth of what it was. Um, yeah, so once I found out the truth, I respected my, my daughter's wishes, and I moved on, even though it was very hurtful, uh, very um, devastating and shocking. I just moved on. I've been moving forward ever since. I used to break down. I broke down as if someone passed away. Uh, it still hurts, but I'm able to gather myself and know that um, it's okay, you know. Um, that burden and that pain is no longer my pain, but I will always feel um, the betrayal. I felt very betrayed um, because what, what took place with my daughter, I would never do to another mother, especially my sisters their children they're my, my i got so many nieces and i got a few nephews but not one of them can tell you that i sat down with them and talked about their mother be little their mother or try to turn them against their mother or make them feel like they don't need to love their mother they don't have to respect their mother i would never have done anything like that and that was done to me and in that situation, my daughter made up her mind that I would not be a part of her life, but um, my, my sisters and them would be a part of her life and I will not be. Um, and that includes me, Nadine, and Dream. So, um, and she did a few things that we, did, we couldn't understand uh, throughout the course of, you know, time going past. But now it all came together. Once we knew the truth, we understood it all. And it was just completely shocking. We could have saved ourselves a lot of hurt and pain if we had knew the truth, you know, but we didn't know. And um, some people feed off of other people's pain. Some people feed off other people's hurt. Um, they enjoy seeing you suffer. And you don't think it's people out there like that, but it is. So. 2018 was the beginning of my journey of finding out the truth about my daughter, my family, cutting off relationships, some that need to be cut off and some that I shouldn't have cut off. Um, 
and also 2018 was how can I put it um, being that viral sensation <laughs> trying to carry on with uh, what has kind of dropped in my, lo my lap like becoming viral wasn't something that I really thought would ever really happen for someone like me but it did but now it's not just about you know being a viral sensation now how do I continue doing what I set out to do, and that was to do ASMR and help other people who was dealing with uh, different things in their life, like myself, and give people entertainment and something other to think about than their sadness, their pain, helping them calm down, helping them sleep, or just helping them relax and saying, wow, I like this chick. She's pretty, she's pretty cool. You know, I like her. You know, so, um, so now I had to continue, and I wanted to continue doing it without uh, knowing that 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 rush, like the, the becoming a virus sensation, it was like a rush, you know, like a continuous rush, you know. And then when the rush slowed down, do you slow down? Do you kind of back off? Do you kind of go away? And um, I remember one of my sisters, when she found out what was going on with me and what I was doing, she contacted me and she said to me, oh, you only got 15 minutes of fame. It ain't going to last forever. You know, so when she said that to me, I was like, I didn't even think of that or think about it like that. I thought what I was doing, well, what I was doing was really helping other people. So, yeah, that, you know, it wasn't about that, that viral moment. But I guess some people feel like, oh, when you go viral, it's only going to be for a second, and that's it, and then it's over. So then I had to start thinking about how do I continue being consistent. And it was so hard to be consistent with everything that I was dealing with. I was so emotional. I felt like I was an emotional wreck at times. I felt like um, I was uh, watching my grown kids grow up. Like, all my kids were grown, so now I'm dealing with that. And that was like, what? Like, oh my God, I'm no more babies? And see, that's where my grandkids were supposed to come in and feel that, 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 you know, that motherness. You know, like when your kids grow up, now you got your grandkids. And then when I found out that my grandkids would really never be, that's with my daughter, uh, oldest daughter, would never really be a part of my life again, um, was heartbreaking because there was times that I had my grandkids, they stayed with me, and I would take them, I would even take care of them for my daughter with, without, without her being worried about them at all, you know, for as long as she needed me to, but I didn't know on her behalf it was only temporary, and it was also to snatch them away and, and watch me go through the pain, you know, of not having them around. So, so during that time, I, I was dealing with, uh, knowing that my grandchild was still a grand, my grandchildren were still grandchildren and that they were growing up and that I was not going to be a part of that. So I was dealing with that in 2018. And then in 2018, I had to uh, move because even though I had a income spike and it was so nice, I thought I thought it was going to stay like that and continue getting better. But um, there's things that you don't know when you're, a creator and you have to learn and it didn't stay like that um it actually just kind of like dwindled all the way down and i didn't know how to get back up where i needed to be so that i could continue doing what i'm doing because it takes time and money to be a creator it's, a, it's like a, a constant investment you know so um dealing with uh the, the income loss in 2018 was a lot. So we ended up getting a way less an apartment. Uh, my son was gone, um, so he wasn't exactly home. Uh, so we got like a, a small apartment. Me and Nadine ended up sharing rooms again and Dream, we had room for Dream and then we was just um, trying to make it again uh, until um, things got better. We felt comfortable and we felt like we could make it, but then 
um, we had uh, um, um, people are just so mean. People are so mean. I was dealing with um, people in like the leasing office. I was dealing with the neighbor. Stuff that I never really thought I would have to deal with, I started dealing with in 2018. Um, so now it was um, moving and trying to get to the point where I could um, be able to keep my income at a certain point so that we can continue doing what we are doing. Um, we started going through different changes. Dream started going through his changes as a man. Nadine started going through her changes as a woman. I started going through my changes as a, a not a mother of children, mother more but a mother of grown people, and also as growing older as a woman. Growing older as a woman. So yeah, so uh, that's a lot of what took place in uh, 2018. It was like a down spiral, and then I had to uh, really motivate myself to want to continue doing what I'm doing and be okay with not having sometimes or waiting to see if I will be able to get it. It was just like a, it was an investment to continue. So I continued throughout 2018, as you know, because today is May 30th, 2024, and I am still creating ASMR content. I am still vlogging my life. I am still here. So yeah, we continue where in 2018, I wasn't sure if I was gonna continue or not. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. I'm glad that y'all are enjoying the vlog and I love y'all comments. I was so happy to see y'all comments the other day and I'm just gonna, gonna run through uh, the comments real quick just to say hi to let y'all know that I um, did get y'all comments. So, <laughs> all right. So, hey, hey, Adrian. I was surprised to see Adrian. Um, I was like, oh wow, I didn't even know you knew about um, this channel. Uh, no, uh, no labels. Seventy four eighty eight. I love all your comments. Thank you. I love Alexandria, uh, phenomenal woman. Six one one one. I love that. James Dunn. Hey, James. Um, uh, yeah, so thank y'all for y'all comments. I appreciate it. I was really shocked to even see that I actually even had comments. I was like, oh my God, we're going to have so much fun here. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And yeah, y'all can look forward to the little talks like this. I'll be watching a lot of the vlogs with y'all. So if there's an update that I need to do, we'll be having talks like this. So look forward to that. Bye.